What's going on everybody and welcome to Memorial Stadium here in Lincoln, Nebraska where we will take on the number 21 team in the nation, the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Your St. Thomas Tommies looking to improve on a great Big Ten debut season, already ranked number 16 in the country. Let's see if this game will take us into the top 15. Gonna be a good one so make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe if you're new. Let's go ahead and jump into this ball game, shall we? All right, man, we will see if we can keep up the defensive momentum that we had from the Northwestern game. Curry it over to a ranked Nebraska squad. Hostile environment, I'm certainly excited as Sam Horgrove actually picks up a first down from the jump. You know, it looks like they might go towards a short passing game as, you know, right now it's a decent start for the Cornhuskers, man. Seven-yard gain on that play. But we do get him to a third and in inches nonetheless. Let's see if we can get these boys off the field as Antoine Black misses. Going for the tailback. And instead, the quarterback keeps it. So now it's second and 12. You know, a couple plays later. Going to get it to Jackson on the left-hand side. Michael Jackson, interesting enough, a nice little gain. As we do get him to another third down. Once again, Roberts dropping back to pass. They're going to try to go upfield. As Ikea Sutton tries to pick up the first down, nearly gets it, but it's marked just short. And so they're going to go for this extremely long field goal. The kick is up. It had the distance, but it was way wide to the left. You know, dude definitely has a foot on him, man, for sure, but just wasn't quite good enough. So now St. Thomas will take the field for the very first time today. You know, and Nebraska, you know, surprisingly, you know, it's taking a good portion of this quarter. You know, both offenses have definitely struggled to, you know, get anything going early on. As actually, now that I think about it, we actually did go free and out on our first drive. But, you know, Nebraska hasn't been able to do anything either. So, that's just where we're at right now in this ballgame. As Giovanni Kosum finally picks up a first down for us. It took a little bit longer than usual, but we got the job done nonetheless. As Brooks going to go up the field, up the middle for a nice 8-yard gain. You know, nice little run for our senior quarterback. As we'll go back to that read option once again. If it's not broke, why fix it? As there's another nice run for Noah Brooks. Another 13-yard gain on the play. Nice run for, the, for our quarterback once again. As we're moving along pretty well, you love to see that. Is now third and five going to Stamen Shelby, who makes a man miss and is able to pick up some good yardage upfield. A critical third down catch for the backup tailback. As we're in the red zone, and that usually means points. Let's see if we can make that dream come true as Tyreek Miller nearly gets into the end zone, just marked just a little short. So we'll try to punch it in here. Go to Damon Shelby. He finds the end zone. Touchdown, Tommies. A great drive there for this Tommies offense, able to find the end zone. So another free and out for Nebraska, and we find ourselves on the field once again. So far, we're doing really good. So good, in fact, that there's not even any offensive highlights for Nebraska right now. So you love to see that. As we'll continue to move down this field, first and ten. Brooks, clean pocket, finds Rashawn Bird, who does get lit up a little bit like a Christmas tree. Still a seven-yard gain, though. You love to see it. As now we'll go into this play action now. Noah Brooks will drop back the pass. He's looking around. Actually just going to go ahead and just scramble up field. You know, not willing to risk it for the biscuit. Though he does take a little bit of a shot there. As now, first and ten again. ABJ taking a shot there, but another five-yard gain. You want to find a nice little hole. You love to see it. It's now second and five. Oh, that should have been picked off by Brian Baker. We got extraordinarily lucky there. But instead, it's third down. We still have our hopes and dreams on this uh, drive. As Brooks going to try to pick up the first down. And not only does he not get it, but he fumbles the ball. And Nebraska look like they are going to take it all the way back. And like a girl in a country song, as Jack Legion puts it, it is gone. And now that is how Nebraska gets on the board first. A touchdown by John Jean of the Nebraska defense. So after that pretty terrible fumble, we are back on the field once again. 
Three blitz are coming our way, but able to identify that it's man-on-man -man coverage. David Hudson the third gets open. A 22-yard gain on the play. Nice job by Noah Brooks be able to stare at the face of the defense. However, it looks like Noah Brooks also suffered a shoulder injury. So we have our backup quarterback in there now. His first pass, it's intercepted. Nobody was really open, just tried to make a play. And unfortunately, it didn't work out at all as Andrew Pierce was able to cut that thing off. So now Nebraska has the football for the first time in a minute. But despite that, it's a tie ball game still. As they go deep for Roberts, it's... Oh man, Sam Horgrove made that catch somehow. A huge game for Nebraska. As they're able to move this thing downfield still. As they'll go to Sutton again. A great run up the middle before Jesus Solworth is finally able to make the tackle or at least slow down his momentum. It's an eight yard gain. As now, next play, going to the end zone. He finds Desmond Bryant. Touchdown, Nebraska. And two early turnovers in this game gives them the lead as a result of that. Just got to remember to clean it up, man, because right now the last two possessions, we simply haven't done that. And, you know, if we need to do that, that means Noah Brooks got to step up his game a little bit. Able to come back out after the shoulder injury. Let's see how it affects him. First and 10 coming up. Brooks going to scramble to the right-hand side. Looking around, just going to scramble once again. Takes another shot before going out of bounds. That's something you definitely have to watch. See how that shoulder holds up for the rest of the game. As he did strain, strain it early. On as he fumbles it again. This time it's Ray that falls on it. It's another turnover for Noah Brooks. Just a very sloppy game so far. As that's another turnover. But thankfully this time around. They don't capitalize on that, not even scored any points. So now we're back on the field again. Can we do something right here? Because ever since that first drive, we simply have not. So now, second and one. Brooks looking around. Going to go to his left. Finds Giovanni. Cokes him up the middle. For up right up to midfield. Another good catch for Giovanni. This is a first and 10 now. Brooks going to drop back again. Same play, and it's the same results as well. Another 17-yard gain on the play. Moving down the field pretty well again. Just got to make sure to limit the mistakes. As Brooks, squaring to his right, going to try to throw over across his body, and that time works out perfectly for him. A tight window that was able to get through to Pablo Sanchez. As a couple plays later, going to try to throw another tight ball, and it's a badly thrown pass that will be intercepted once again and it's already the fourth turnover of this first half look where Coxon was and where he threw that ball that is simply not how you get the job done whatsoever so really need our defense to come through here and you know make a play so we can keep this a one score game but right now it's not looking good as Sutton already has them at midfield and there's still 30 seconds left and with two timeouts that can feel like a century. It's now second and eight. Couple plays later. Roberts dropping back. Going to try to chuck it deep. And it, that's intercepted. But this time it's a St. Thomas player doing it. Michael Granson, the true freshman, getting ahead of that ball and making the interception. As we do go into halftime, Nebraska does hold a 14-7 lead. What has been a very sloppy first half for both squads so far today. So the second half is officially underway with some pretty breaking news. Michael Granson Jr. is in the game as Noah Brooks has been benched in favor for the freshman quarterback. So let's see if that will provide the spark that this offense needs. As Jr. going to go over in the middle, finds DH3 for a gain of six. A nice uh, little gain for the quarter for, uh, you know, for DH3. As we're just trying to do things, do some quick pass plays to get our quarterback into rhythm. Because he is very much battered. But so far delivering calm balls. Making the right read for now. As Tyreek Miller does make the catch once again. So now, first and ten. Granson looking. Going to try to get it to ABJ. But it's way off the mark. That might have been the crowd noise playing a role there. As you can see, it is really rattling our quarterback right now. 
as this is the first time that he's really had significant playing time and you know so far you know doing what he can do as he does check down the ABJ make that play as now we'll go to the running game this time ABJ going upfield for a gain of six that takes us over the century yard mark for rushing yards although it's been a struggle personally for ABJ on the ground as we'll go over to Sean Doyle what a catch made by his quarterback you love to see it as we are so close to getting into the end zone and this time we finally get in there Granson Jr. with his first touchdown as a quarterback it's a running touchdown off a read option let's go but can the defense also do us a favor and hold up for us they have done a really good job so far let's see if they can keep that positive energy going as for now they do give up a first down to Desmond Bryant for a gain of eight yards on the play as I'll hand it off to Sutton another tough run up the middle before Antoine Black comes in from behind and makes the tackle so they're steadily moving the ball upfield as there's another really long run for Roberts down the sideline and it's near just already in Nebraska field goal range you know exactly what we need after we get a touchdown for the first time in a minute is now third and long Going to try to go on the halfback screen, and Zach Bones is there to slap that thing up. So it stops the bleeding for now, but Nebraska will get a field goal as we really need our offense to step up here, man. We need something to happen here. We got a touchdown the last time out. Let's see if we can get a touchdown once again with Granson Jr. at the helm. As so far, it's, you know, doing okay. You know, not necessarily living up to the hype, but that's fine. As Granson Jr. going down the sideline, that's what he's best known for. He's got really good speed. So if he can, if he needs to scramble, he does have the ability to scramble out. So we'll definitely try to use that more often. As we'll try to throw to DH3 again. It is completed, but it is well short of first down marker. But we will be going for it here. Only oh, need two yards. We got a solid all line. We got Shelby. Can we make it happen? Yes, we do. Another first down for St. Thomas by the hairs of our forehead. Keeps the drive going for now as we'll go back. This time, Jameer Mitchell gets a carry. We don't hear his name very often, but this time around does make a pretty nice gain on that play. A 13-yarder is now first and 10. Shelby going to take it upfield again. Some tough running. Several Cornhuskers converging, but still able to make the play nonetheless. As we're already in the final quarter of three-point game, can our backup quarterback keep our winning streak alive? We're about to find out right here, right now. So this first play of the fourth quarter is a third down play. Big play as Shelby falls forward and they give us the first down. Let's freaking go. You love to see that, man. As another first and ten coming up here. Going to stick to the ground gain. Shelby going to the outside. Breaking a tackle. And able to pick up eight more yards. Let's freaking go. So now third and inches. Only oh, need one more inch. Can we get it with Jameer Mitchell? Granson handing off to Mitchell. And he's in with ease. Touchdown Tommies. And for the first time since the first quarter. We actually have a lead you love to see it but we still have to deal with the nebraska offense it has done a really good job you know we have at least contained nebraska unless it was off of a turnover other than that we've only allowed the field goal with our defense purely as there's another run that's stuffed up the middle i hear a sudden trying to find the space it simply wasn't there so we make them punt but we go free and out too so it's all going to come down to this drive, essentially. I imagine they'll have to go for it as Robert does sneak to the outside and pick up some decent yardage. Thought we had him bottled up, but that simply wasn't the case. So now, second and four. Roberts going to the left-hand side. He's already got some space again, and they are instantly across midfield here. Another first and ten upcoming for the Cornhuskers as they'll throw short again to Jackson another first down Jesus Solworth does eventually make the tackle but they're inching closer and closer to a touchdown to take this lead 
as we need this third down stop here. It's a halfback screen, and it could have been picked off by James Saffy who was paying attention, but he does break up the pass. So it all comes to this, fourth and five. Can our defense make a stand? Roberts dropping back. He's looking around. He's sacked. Ernie Steele makes the play as he steals this game. And so all we need to do is t take this first down. This game will be ours. Third and inches. Granton Jr. He even holds on to the ball. This game, that is how you seal a ball game up. Let's go, man. As that is going to do it here in the great state of Nebraska. St. Thomas narrowly avoids an upset, winning this game by a final score of 21 to 17. A very grueling performance for both teams, but St. Thomas was able to tough it out and get the W, and that's what you love to see here, man. Let's go. A look at the team stats here, man. You could tell that this game shouldn't have really been that close. We outgained these guys by 300 yards. You know, over the course of today's game, but the turnovers was what kept them in this game in the first place. You know, multiple fumbles by Noah Brooks, a couple of interceptions by our quarterbacks. We did force one ourselves, but it was because of that that we nearly blew this game. Checking out the stats for us today, though, and it was a pretty rough performance for the quarterbacks. Uh, Noah Brooks and uh, Michael Granson Jr. both threw an interception, neither of them getting a touchdown pass, so that's pretty tough. The running game, though, we know did you know just enough to get us uh, you know get us a W. That's where all of our touchdowns came from. Damon Shelby found the end zone. Michael Granson Jr. found the end zone, and same could be said for Jameer Mitchell. Receivers today, you know, one person that really had a pretty solid game was Giovanni Coxum. He had five catches for 72 yards, so you love to see that. Um, everyone else was okay, you know, but you know because our quarterbacks couldn't get going, you know, not a lot of receiving stats. The defense, though, was what saved us today. If it wasn't for this defense, we would have lost for sure. Jim Smith led the team in tackles today with five apiece. And, you know, Zach Bones, Barron, and Granson had four to their names as well. We did get a couple of sacks from Ernie Steele and Antoine Black, but then we also had an interception from Marcus Granson, which was our only turnover of the game. We did jump into the top 25 polls to see what was going on. And we see St. Thomas up to number 11 in the country, really making a great name for themselves after that struggle of a start, two for two to start the season. But ever since we have won five consecutive ball games, counting that Nebraska win. Also checking out the conference standings, and we have a three-team race for the Big Ten West. We have Minnesota, we got us, and we got Iowa. The best thing about this schedule is that we play both of these teams in the upcoming weeks. So these next three games are going to determine for sure who's going to come out on top and represent the West Division. Over on the east side, however, it looks like Michigan State is starting to pull away. 8-1, 6-0 in conference play. Only loss was to a Miami U team, which is extremely you know, unexpected and definitely a letdown. But other than that, they've looked unstoppable so far. So for now, it seems like Michigan State will represent the East. So next episode, we will go on the road to play against the Hawkeyes. We're 0-2 against these guys in this series, but Kurt Herbstreit is going to rock with us in the next episode. and He thinks that we have what it takes to knock these guys off for the very first time in this series. And it's a very important game for them too because they did beat Minnesota a couple of games ago. So if they win this game, they're essentially going to clinch the Big Ten West Whereas for us, if we win, we'll set ourselves up for a potential play-in game for a championship against rival Minnesota. So guys, this is going to be a really exciting episode. If you're all about it, make sure you smash that like button as well as hit subscribe if you're new. This is John Jake Gaming on the mic wishing you guys a wonderful day. Take care, everybody.